welcome, and thank you for joining me on the Path of the Seeker. We have begun a new eclipse season. This is the first eclipse since the North Node moved into Gemini, and it's the culmination of that very powerful Scorpio new moon that was full of Phoenix energy. And I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. Transformation is not easy. The full moon is the feminine part of the lunar cycle, encouraging reflection just as the full moon normally reflects the light of the sun at this point of the cycle. That's why I offer a full moon meditation where we go more deeply into the symbols of the lunar cycle. A full moon is a time of inner contemplation as it represents the passive intelligence of the feminine. This full moon, however, is a lunar eclipse. Astrologers don't really agree what a lunar eclipse means. I was born during one and I've done a lot of research on this and it's amazing how little information there is on the concept. Basically, it's considered a stronger than usual energy. And that's about it. So we will turn to esoteric symbolism. I view lunar eclipses as a cutting off or pruning energy. Symbolically, the moon represents the subconscious and this full moon is aligned with Gemini. The subconscious is aligned with this chatty sign of duality, but that's being silenced by this lunar eclipse. What's being emphasized is the sun, which symbolizes the conscious mind and that's aligned with Sagittarius. We are going to have a moment of clarity where we actually see the bigger picture in our individual lives and perhaps on a collective level as well. Sagittarius is the archer. Now this sign is connected to the concept of sin, which in Hebrew means to miss the mark. This is an archery term. An esoteric depiction, Sagittarius is a woman symbolizing the subconscious and spirit, aiming her bow to the heavens, back to the creator. And the more familiar depiction is the centaur that represents the animal, or lower soul, of the human being, aiming for the heavens, or its higher self, the soul. The spiritual goal, the purpose of the game of life, you might say, is to awaken the sleeping eternal soul within. That paradox of realizing that at your core, your soul is a limitless eternal consciousness, but you're experiencing a temporary limited human existence can be disorienting, but it changes everything. Our soul's goal may be to awaken to its true nature, but human life is full of distractions. We set all sorts of goals, such as owning particular cars, collecting things, or having a particular job. Some of us were taught that we were created and placed on earth for a particular mission. And many feel as though if they don't figure out what that mission is, they are somehow missing the mark. Strangely enough, all of that runs counterintuitive to the soul's purpose of awakening, to its true eternal nature, while entombed in the body. But it is an important part of the process. After all, souls had to discover what they did and did not like. We had to go through the transformation from our unlimited potential to an experienced being. So we had to go through the process of identifying ourselves with things until we realized we're not really any of those groups or pop culture items. Not long ago, I realized, as I was meditating on the fact that I had everything I could possibly need or want in this life, and I still wasn't satisfied, that I was never going to be satisfied on this earth, because I'm not really from here. And I'm not talking about being a starseed here. I'm talking about the origin of our souls in general. Yes, the Creator created this realm for human beings, so it is a wonderful place with everything we could ever desire. I love nature. However, I realized that the only thing I really craved was the companionship of the Creator. Instantly, I felt relieved and satisfied with that answer. A lot of the cravings for material desires I had experienced before was gone. Our symbols for this moon cycle were mostly about transformation, but also impermanence. The physical realm consists of nothing but impermanence. Even the faces of what we think are unchanging and movable mountains are in a constant state of change thanks to erosion. The indigenous first frost moon is that signal that we are about to enter the underworld, or winter, when much of nature hibernates as it waits for the return of the full power of the sun. This is a necessary time of rest and renewal. This is the passive energy of the feminine. In the winter, it may seem as though the world is cold and dead, but there is a lot of life moving underneath the surface. Seeds are growing, and they might not poke their heads up out of the soil until spring, but this is when they really are born. 
Every fall the world changes, the trees and the fields rest, as life is reborn within the womb of the earth. Nun, the Hebrew letter associated with this lunar cycle, represents faith. Just as Nun begins and ends the word for melody, we have faith that a new song exists even as the one we are listening to comes to an end. This lunar cycle represents the beginning of the end of this year. It also represents unlimited potential for the next year. The death card, with the sunrise in the background, signals this is a time of renewal. But first, there must be an ending. I think that's what the fox medicine card really spoke to me about this lunar cycle. Just as the fox naturally adapts to match the current season, I feel ready to adapt to the current energy. This dance of life and this interplay of light and dark, of death and renewal, always fascinates me. This is the first year I'm feeling time slowed down as we approach Christmas. The fact that I no longer work in retail and there will be less family gatherings is probably lending itself to this feeling of comfortable hibernation in my personal life. As the outer reality becomes more weird, I find myself fascinated but disconnected. I've accepted that here in California, as we enter the eighth month of lockdown, that this will continue for the majority of 2021 as well, and there isn't much I can do about that, as most of society is in agreement with that course of action. I can tell that the majority of society is excited by this idea because the toilet paper war is back, and a lot of places are selling out of toilet paper and other essential supplies again. And if you follow what's exciting for society, which is usually what catches the national headlines, you can tell where society is heading. So I won't really be surprised if we end up with a national lockdown. I realize that all of this is alignment with fate. While I believe in free will, we can react to the energy of the moment in whatever way we choose, I also believe that the energy is predetermined and governed by planetary alignments. That is to say, not that the planets cause the energy, but they are a reflection of the energy that is occurring in the cosmos at that time, as predetermined by the Creator. I know astrologically that the North Node will be in Gemini until January of 2022. That means there will be a lot of confusion, analytical activity, and a division until then. That's simply the energy of this time, and we have the ability to work with that energy instead of react to it or resist it. Even though we may be inspired by this full moon to set goals and make progress, both very Sagittarius-based concepts, with the south node of the moon aligned with Sagittarius, what we need to let go of, the energy is only temporarily supporting that. Overall, the energy of the next two years is focused on the personal and local level. I feel as though we're getting a break from that global community that's kind of been forced on us with the internet as the world has seemed to shrink. And with Sagittarius in the South Node, that global community is taken off the main focus and the local community is being focused on with all of the attention to detail that Gemini can muster, which is a lot. If you know any Geminis, they know a lot of details about a lot of subjects. And once they get their hands on a particular item of interest, they don't give it up or let it go until they are completely satisfied with the answers that they receive. As I was contemplating this lunar cycle, I wondered why Scorpio, that kicked this lunar cycle off, represents the awakening energy. The answer may lie within its placement between Virgo, depicted as a sleeping goddess or the sleeping soul and Sagittarius, which is the awakened soul aiming to return to the Creator with her bow and arrow pointing to the Milky Way in galactic center. David Warner Matheson demonstrates this in his book, The Ancient Worldwide System, that I'm currently reading. Why, I wondered, does the archer preside over the second moon of the western direction in the indigenous American tradition? The western direction is the element of water and the polishing or finishing touches of a project. I realize that at this point of the year, we release our goals. Scorpio is the apex of the year. The apex of a story is the moment where the hero faces off with the villain. Only in our soul's story, we play both roles. That's why it's important that the two do not destroy one another. In Scorpio, we have the opportunity to embrace and integrate our shadow, becoming one. And that is why the resurrection and second spiritual birth, represented by Ophicus, 
is associated with the zodiac sign of Scorpio. As we step into Sagittarius, we start shedding all that we have accumulated over the past year as we prepare for the sun's triumph over the darkness on the winter solstice. That nicely summarizes the energy of this new moon. This is a moment of releasing. In particular, we are letting go of that racing Gemini mind, that part of us that goes, why, 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 why? This isn't a time for that frantic mental activity, but a time of growth. We tend to cling to the past as though it somehow defines us, but it doesn't. This full moon is offering us the opportunity to release that over analyzing mind and settle into the deep, quiet place of solitude within, where growth actually happens. That is where our eternal potential exists. One of the major milestones we can achieve is learning to tend to that eternal potential without setting limits, goals, or intentions. I find it really interesting that I'm releasing the series of videos starting with The Illusion of Separation, Atlantis in the Fall, and Accepting the Self in the Shadow. Because for me, these are all old ideas that need to be released on a bigger platform to reach more people. But ultimately, that represents a former depiction of myself. I've moved on to other states of being since I wrote those posts. And that's why I find myself really excited to embrace the change that's happening in the world instead of fearing it like so many. Change and transformation can be difficult, as I said at the beginning of this video. It takes a lot of work, and ultimately, change is almost always worth it because you have a fresh start. And at the beginning of every story, there is unlimited potential. Well, that's the end of my full moon meditation on the symbols of this full moon and lunar cycle. I hope you have a blessed full moon, and thank you, brave soul for joining me on exploring this avenue on the path of the seeker.